Hi everybody, Chris Story here. Um, sorry I couldn't do the look of the week sooner. I had some back troubles and then I got food poisoning this week, so it was kind of a tough week. But I got the look of the week for you right now. Um, I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna start this lick. It's an alternate picking lick. I'm gonna start at about 185. Seems fair. We're gonna do all 16th notes again. Uh, here it goes. It's an E flat minor. So here it goes. One more time. Now you can speed that up. Let's speed that up first, and then I'm going to slow it back down, then speed it back up. 192. Okay, so that's just it for now. Didn't play it too many times so you could hear it, but um, I'm at E flat here. And what I'm doing is I'm actually playing six notes, and then I'm going up to the fifth. And you're playing the next six diatonic notes. So, so there you have it. That's kind of the sequence that, that's going on. The whole sequence is. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of going up another fifth, I'm just gonna go down a degree in the scale and play those six notes. So that's the that's kind of the sequence, very slowly. Now I'm gonna do the same thing starting there. used to practicing the, these things at a quick quick rate that you get the muscle memory built for it and you have a hard time like slowing it down and seeing where you are that's why it's really tricky um, but don't do what I just did um, you should really know everything very slowly so let's let's start at like 128 I think this is moderately slow So even slower, I'm going to slow it way down first, to 80. So now just keep in mind, what I'm doing is I'm going up a fifth and then I guess down a second, diatonically. So. For lack of better words, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's not exactly that all the way through, but it sounds really nice. And it's got a really nice consequence at the end. So now let's speed that back up. Let's start over here. Yeah. Let's start about 187. Let's try 200. Not so clean. It's a little better. Something you could work on. I'm going to push it to 205. It's 
see, you start to kind of lose some of that pick definition um, at high velocities like that, you know? Just kind of like how a kick drum, when you get up, up I mean, kick drums go a lot faster. They have two feet involved, but in metal, you need a trigger because basically what happens at those rates, how hard you hit the string or the, 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 the kicks kind of softens up because you're going so fast. The same thing goes here, but that's why you should always slow it down. I'd say way to save is probably optimum until you start losing the quality of the pick. <laughs> Cody Armstrong and Chris, uh, they went out of town for a little while, but they left me uh, this thing. I'm playing it through that thing, so I got a little line six practice doodad going on um yeah so it's uh it's pretty cool man i like this lick i've been working on this lick for a long long time really like the way it sounds yeah you know, some chords you could use over this i did it in e flat minor really if you think about it it would be D sharp because this really if you take my tuning or any drop tuning like this and you take your minor scale and instead of playing it there you use the root note of your lowest guitar your lowest note and you shift your minor scale up two whole steps you're actually playing in, in Lydian so this is B Lydian What's going on here? You can hear this in an old song of mine called Prisoners of War. Um, I use the same thing and I, I do it quite a lot actually, a lot of stuff I write. really nice so the chords I'm playing here is I'm just playing open if you're in a drop tuning so even if you put it 195 here So there you have it. I'm gonna slow it down and give you an, uh, an up close real quick. I'm gonna slow it down to about 90. Here we go, 90. I'm gonna get real close here. Now keep in mind, if you're in a standard tuning, E flat is in the 11th position. So don't pay attention to where I am because I'm a whole step higher than you, probably.
And finally, 201. Something you can always slow down and work on, work on the pronunciation of your picking. You know, a lot of shredders, they'll do these videos where they're just, you know, picking as fast as they can, but what you might not notice is that there's no way to measure that. How fast can you play versus how fast can you play accurately? And what I've learned to kind of do over the years is be completely honest with myself. A lot of people look at the stuff in Awaken the Dreamers and all that other stuff and they think it's really incredible, but what I was lacking back then, not that I'm discrediting what I did, but what I really lacked was the way to measure what I was doing. And uh, now that I'm going to school, I look back and I try to notate some of that stuff and it, I find it incredibly difficult. So word of advice, play with the metronome, always and be honest with yourself. A lot of these people, I see a lot of people I know online, they're struggling with the ego battle of what it means to be a guitar player. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned that you can always get better. You know, you're always gonna go back and look at something you've done in the past, and you're gonna find ways to improve it. See, the thing is, is everybody's in a race to, a, to the top of a mountain that has no top. It doesn't, matter how fast you can play, how pronounced you can play, um, you know, but I painted it, I, or I, I told the story of a picture of, I told the story, I'm sorry, uh, about an apple, okay, if you can paint a picture of an apple, this is, or a bucket of fruit, a basket of fruit, artists paint these for practice, right? And, you know, the first ones might come out kind of all right, and then they keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And then their butt baskets of fruit end up looking really good. And that's fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, it's still a basket of fruit. It's not a very interesting picture. So even if you have that technical skill that, that, that's killing everybody and makes you the best guitar player in the world, you're still painting a basket of fruit. You need to find your art and your style and you need to make yourself stand out. But most of all, you need to have something to say. And that's why I love sharing what I do, I've done, you know, because not for nothing, I think I'm developing my own style still and uh, my own character. And uh, I think it's very important. And one thing I've learned is to always be honest with myself. Some things I can play fast. Um, I'm going to be doing um, a video very soon about the solo I did for Austrian Death Machine last week. And uh, it's going to be really good, but there's a part in there that's alternate picked, and it's at 220, and I, and I got it. But the thing is, it's a different sequence, you know. So it was hard. It took me a couple of days of practice to get it that quick, but I got it. And I'll demonstrate that very soon. But you see, as you can see, at this lick, because of the direction and the motion of it all, you know, I start to fall apart at about 200, and I'm honest with myself and everybody else about it, you know? So, whenever, whenever you see somebody trying to alt pick really fast, how are they dissecting it? How are they pulling it apart? What's going on, really? The slower you play and the more pronounced you play, I think the better it sounds, you know? You could play something at 180 at 16th notes, relatively not that fast, especially in the death metal realm. But if you're really picking those notes accurately, it, it, it'll really come out. One good example in death metal is um, Necrophagist, you know? None of their stuff is, uh, is incredibly fast. They play in a lot of sextuplets. Um, if they do 16th notes, they're not all that, that quick. But they're very articulated, you know? Very articulated, and, and it stands out, and it's played well. So it's something that everybody should aim for. Um, Miles Davis uh, was, a, was a, I think, a sax player, and he has a lot of songs, but he used to describe these kind of arpeggios and all this stuff, because he used to do it on a, like, all this stuff that I used to do. I don't care to do anymore, but how he used to call it is they're almost like slurs or walls of sound. It's an expression. You know, and that's the best that a lot of people could do to say for that kind of thing. It's an expression and it can be good in its place. But when it comes down to it, you really 
you really should think about what you're doing and try to execute the mechanics as much as you can. Because it's going to help you paint that picture more clearly when you do decide to draw the draw or paint your picture, or tell your story, and uh, you'll be good. Just keep working on it. Um, I've got all these flyers and everything printed. Hold on, just a moment, and I will show you. Let me find the business cards. Can you, oh, there it is. can say it's got my phone number on it but so I don't want that on the internet however um, that's that and it says ethereal artist on the back there I need to shave and uh, here we go thanks, thanks to Matt from ethereal for designing these are QR codes here so when you get when you get these in the mail, if I send them to you, if you're one of my students, you can scan this. It'll take you right to the YouTube page, which you'll be watching this video on. Um, it's got my email and everything out, else like that. Um, I'm teaching. I finished school in about two weeks, and I'll have about 10, 15 more slots open because I won't have any school to do. <sighs> so my rate is 25 bucks an hour. It's very very cheap, and. Uh, I've got times, so if you are interested, get at me, and um, I hope you're all well. Things are coming along great for Quantum of Light. Um, I'm going to be doing an instrumental track, which is a Quantum of Light song. It's going to be um, on the Ethereal album coming out. Uh, I did the Austrian Death Machine solo. We're demoing two songs right now, and we should have them out very soon, very, very soon. Uh, we just got to do some editing and then send them off to a guy to mix and then uh, things will be kicking off. And um, here at about the end of June, we are going to play our first shows, probably here in Las Vegas and we'll probably venture out to Los Angeles first and possibly to Arizona. We'll see. Um, we got to do a Kickstarter and all that. Some news on that's coming up. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Thanks a lot, guys.